I'm Mally Moore. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. Happy Halloween, everybody. It's it. Today is the it's, day. It's Yes. <laughs> Part five of five. This is our conclusion to our Halloween, October spooktacular, whatever you want to call it this month. All horror themed. This is the last one. And this is a good one. And I gotta ask, did anyone manage to get this? No one got even close. That's, fin- that's so f- f- everyone, fantastic. Everyone was guessing, oh, I mean, obviously you're gonna do Halloween. I was like, well... <laughs> but I mean, well, <laughs> Halloween does have a... Not really a fucked up ending. I mean, it's, Michael gets away. That's about yeah. it. So, no, this is way a way better choice, oh, I gotta yeah, say. Absolutely. No one got this and we still haven't announced what it is yet so let's keep it under wraps right so let's just talk about the the uh the uh, aura and the clout of this movie because this movie is a straight up cult classic right i mean it it surprised me no other way to describe this movie it surprised me how many people like this movie like it's obviously the outlier in this whole franchise right i mean sure and it just <coughs> astonished me going back and doing research how how many people say this is their favorite out of the whole franchise the whole franchise that's Incl- insane i know how? i don't i don't know have they not seen halloween i, I don't know even halloween 2 i know halloween 2 is my, one of my favorites i mean you know after this yeah yeah well i mean I, people most people are saying you know if they took the halloween name off this movie it, it'd be better you know and i'm like just I'd, call it like season of the witch but still no, I mean it's so. This movie is so rough, bananas. Like it's just absolutely crazy. And I, I get it if you're if you ironically like this movie, but from what I had researched, I think a lot of people genuinely just really enjoy this it. This movie is so early '80s; it hurts my head. <sighs> Jesus Christ! All right, so obviously, uh, again, this is Silver Linings Playlist. If this is your first inclination into our podcast, we are a podcast that takes movies that have sad endings, fucked up endings craziest shit endings such as this one and we try to find the good in it for our character's sake not just from a story perspective from the character's point of view how how is this movie got like some good in it some silver a silver lining for our characters this one's tough yeah before we even get there i'm gonna tell you this one is tough uh not many movies have the balls to ambiguously no, this, one, this one went some places it ambiguously implies that a bunch of children are gonna fucking die <laughs> so we will talk about that when we get there uh but we should go ahead and tell people what it is even though they already should know by reading the title it's halloween 3 season of the witch holy shit when do we talk about the title do we talk about it now or do we wait until we get into the actual plot because this title makes no sense either. <laughs> okay. Nothing no. in this move. Nothing in that title makes sense. We're gonna talk about it because I have a. Th- like it's not really a theory. Okay. It's how it ties into the movie, but we'll we'll, t- we'll get there. Okay. Let's tell. Let's get to the title later because I feel like we need to go over the fucking movie first. So in if, order for my theory to make sense. Right. If you're familiar with the Halloween franchise, you m- might not be familiar with this one. I would right. think. I mean, a lot is, of this is the only one without Michael old, uh, Myers. Michael in it. It's 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 definitely the one the the least seen I think out of the Halloween franchise. So let's try. Do we want, want to explain now or do we want to get to the truth? I, I guess we can go ahead and just talk about it now. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get it out of the way because it's that's the question everyone's. So here's the here's the thinking. idea. Um, John Carpenter makes Halloween one, makes Halloween two, and he goes in with his producers. He's like, look, I want to do a third Halloween movie, but. I don't want it to be about Michael Myers. The idea was he wanted to do a new, like an, an anthology thing, like a new, yeah, which are huge now. Like everything's yeah. do, like Fargo, True American Detective, Horror Story, True yeah, Detective. Like yeah. the anthology thing is huge now, mm-hmm. but at this time, yeah, he wanted to basically do a different kind of horror movie every year. Uh, the only reason I think my, uh, Halloween two came around was because kind of pressure from the producers. Yeah. Um, which wasn't a bad thing because Halloween 2 ruled. Halloween 2 is sick but yeah this one they're like okay no Michael Myers we want a different story a different character and we're going to do this every year we're going to do a new kind of horror story and because this one didn't do terribly well which this, that, that's why we returned to Michael Myers in Halloween 4 the return of Michael Myers yeah uh, you can't they get away balls from your, out with that title didn't they yeah they did you can't get away from that uh that cash cow right there true 
So that brings us to uh, <clears throat> Halloween 3, uh, 1982. Director Tommy Lee Wallace. Uh, the movie stars Tom Atkins, Stacey Nelkin, and Dan O'Hearley. Uh, Hearley, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, it had a modest budget of only $2.5 million and grossed $14 million domestically. I don't know if this movie ever got an international release. I didn't find any information on that. I have no idea. Shockingly, this movie still sits at a 37% on Rotten Tomatoes. I it, That's that's the lowest we've ever done, I think. I don't know, man. Uh, is it? I, mean, I think so. I think Planet of the Apes might have it beat. No. You don't think so? Well, look it up and we'll find out. But yeah, that, that still seems really high to me. Because <laughs> this movie screams camp, but not... This movie's not fun to me. Like, it's not... It's got some fun stuff to make fun of, but it's just not a fun movie to me. Like, I don't... I, I feel like it's a chore every time I have to watch this movie. And I've seen it a number of times. Uh, what do you think, Mally? You- uh, no, I did not enjoy any part of this movie. Holy shit, Terminator 3 is 70%. Yeah. I, I was looking... I was trying to think, what's our lowest movie, but... Oh man, this you might be right. It's what about Planet of the Apes? What are we looking uh, at? Looking right now, forty five percent. Yeah, Jesus. Okay, how did so you beat that? I just looked Planet of the Apes on Rotten Tomato. You're much better at this at interneting. <sighs> All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we listen to the trailer, so people can kind of get kind of an idea of what we're talking about here? Because I'll go ahead and tell you, even if even if you haven't seen this movie and you still want to listen to the podcast, go ahead. Because we're not... Yeah, you're not... <laughs> even no. though we're going to spoil the shit out of it, you're I not... I got a headache watching this movie. I, I would say... Uh, well, let's talk about this first before we... Do you recommend people watch this movie before they listen to this episode? Or are they just fine to just do it? <laughs> I mean, it... Normally... I would say watch the movie before listening to this, mm-hmm. obviously. But for this one, I don't care. Yeah. It's a chore, man. It's it a real... Rough. I watched this... I've watched this movie twice in the past week. Same here. So let's say this. I, I don't and, think... And... Uh, I, I don't man. think it's a, a movie you're supposed to sit down and just watch. I think this is a background movie or a hangover movie or invite your friends over to make fun of it. It's not a movie you can... I, I defy anyone to sit down and just watch the movie all the way through and give their full attention to it. I defy you to do that. It's yeah. it's rough. Yeah, I did it twice this week, and it was awful. Yeah. I ca- like I had to rewind so many times because I just found myself drifting off into other things. It's a confusing movie. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that. Let's go ahead and listen to the trailer. You don't really know much about Halloween. Halloween. The barriers will be down between the real and the unreal. And the dead might be looking in. The last great one took place 3,000 years ago when the hills ran red. Halloween, you happen to know anything about this Cochran? All I can tell you, mister, is watch out. Season He's watching you, friend, I guarantee you that. Trick or treat, trick or treat. Hey, Mr. Cochran, just what is the final process? Fellas, I was just kidding. Witchcraft. To us, it was a way of controlling our environment. Hey! Where are they taking her? They're taking her to the factory. I want a mask. Can I have a mask? Uh, just what I had in mind for you, little buddy. Why, Cochran? Why? Do I need a reason? I've got nothing here to indicate there was ever a body at all. Operator, this is an emergency. <laughs> I do love a good joke, and this is the best ever. A joke on the children. I'm glad you'll be able to watch it. You've got to believe me. They're going to kill us. All of us. Stop it. The world's going to change tonight, Doctor. Happy Halloween. Stop it! Halloween 3. Season of the Witch, the night no one comes home. Season of the Witch. 
why can we can we just review the trailer? Yeah, the trailer is way better than the, the actual The trailer movie. is great. It's way more exciting. Like it feel if I they would have lured me into the theater if I had saw this trailer in in, in 1982. Like I would have been like, "Yeah, I'm in." And even though there's no Michael Myers, even a mention of him in the trailer, no. like I still would have been down. I would have been in. I love the title font that they use. Yeah. It's so like early 80s like yep. he man mm-hmm. it's, it's it's the poster is interesting definitely uh it's as the whole like aesthetic of this movie is interesting but yeah let's actually get into the movie i think so my first note is one of many similar to this but there are so many title cards in this movie no less than i will i will put it at 20 yeah there we That's get a new title about, card for every day. I love the opening music though. Yeah. That music rules. So we get this before we get, actually get into the the title cards, but there's actually kind of the opening credits where we get to see like this uh animated pumpkin being formed with all uh, the credits coming in. And it's God. a seizure inducing pumpkin screen cuz it's constantly flashing black and white and it's oh man. But the song the soundtrack to this to this movie is good. I'll put a question mark on it because it is John Carpenter, but I feel like it's definitely some of his weaker score. I mean, it's yeah. still good like it John ha- Carpenter it, music. No, there's some really good stuff in it, but there's also some stuff that is not right. that. I mean, the, first, the opening song is pretty sick. But I yeah. love that opening song. So we get a title card for every day, every different location we go to, and then at some point there is a montage where we get like, 10 to 15 different cities and there's a title card for each one Mm -hmm. so this movie is title card heavy and also i'll say this movie has a lot of cuts like cuts to make things seem more exciting than they actually are like it's kind of that marvel way of doing things where like you have like okay maybe one person punching another person and it's from like eight different angles yeah (laughs) it's that's like people always like credit like the born movies with that those quick cut fight scenes. Dude, Halloween 3 was doing this in 82. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we start the movie... Just uh, with really bad choreography. Oh, yes. We start the movie with this man running down the street, and he's running from something, and finally we see the headlights of a car come over the the, the, the horizon. Uh, he's being... he's He runs into this, like, junkyard and bumps into this man in a suit. Uh, and this man in the suit starts choking him, choking the man that was running away, and what, he's in front of, they like fall in front of a car, a car that's just kind of parked there. Yeah. And another car that's like on, uh, it's like lifted up. Right. Um, and this man is, this is, this, <coughs> this is the le- most, not most, this is the least actiony action scene I think I've ever seen. That's, that's, that's the best way to describe every action scene in this movie it's there's no action and they film it like it's like a fight scene like i feel like they didn't like i feel like the editor got confused and accidentally like cut in all like the slowed down rehearsals yeah 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 and just said fuck it yeah uh it's basically that this guy's being choked by this man in the suit and they're on the ground and the man being choked pulls like this chain to like knock this car off it's like blocks that it's been lifted up on and the car very slowly i'm talking four miles an hour oh easily <laughs> crushes this man that's in the suit between the two cars and the guy that was being choked escapes and like i said it's they film it like it's the most it badass a like a fast and furious action scene it's so crazy um we cut to this gas station and this 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 uh gas station attendant is watching this news cover. well he's reading the newspaper and on the news on the TV in the background, we find out that uh, a piece of Stonehenge has been stolen. Uh, stolen. 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 Really? Yeah, a piece of Stonehenge has been stolen. Whatever. Uh, did we? That's c- not gonna come back of any importance. Yeah, and then we cut to oh, the, the one worst. thing. <laughs> oh my god! If we, you fucking start whistling this again, I swear to God. Uh, we cut to the one thing that this movie is synonymous with. Uh. And that is giving me a migraine. <laughs> the 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 commercial for a Halloween mask company called Silver Shamrock that is 
sung in the tune of London Bridge is Falling Down. Go ahead, go ahead. I, oh, I'm going to play, play it for him right oh, now, fantastic. actually. So you, this is what happens in the movie. Let's place a bet. I'm going to say no less than 12 times. No less than 12 it's times. It's more than that. You think so? It has to be more than that. So we'll do like Price is Right. I'm going to say like close without going over. Yeah. I think it's at least 12. We hear this commercial. Hang on, I'm, count, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to count. I'm trying to count them all. I believe they do every day, and the movies I believe starts at like nine days before Halloween, okay. and I think they do at least one every day. So that's at least nine. I'm gonna say. <laughs> He's really thinking I'm about leaning, this. <laughs> I kind of want. I'm thinking fifteen. You think fifteen? That seems. A little too excessive. All right. Well, let, let's go I ahead and like let the thirteen and a half. Let's go ahead and let the uh, the audience listen to the song that plays again somewhere between twelve and fifteen times in this movie. That song is absolutely infectious for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> we are all now dumber for having heard it. Uh, Here's my question. Okay, so this Silver Shamrock Company is a... You would think is like the apple of making Halloween masks, right? Because they have this commercial that we hear all throughout this movie. But they only sell three masks. Yeah, how... <laughs> like, they, these have to be like the three... Be- like, I don't know what makes a latex mask mm-hmm. amazing. But they are apparently the shit. And they're not even that cool looking. No, one of them's just a pumpkin. They're really, really shittily made. And I didn't know. Is there a high demand for for Halloween mask? Like, I get, I, dude. I don't, early eighties man. I don't know what was going on there. Oh, uh, okay. So this man, this gas station attendant, you know, he's watching this, and this man that was being choked by the the guy in the suit approaches, and he's like. Pretty much almost, he's like scared. I think they, they basically imply that this man has been almost scared to death. Like he's in shock from how scared he is, right? So this gas station attendant takes this man to um, to a hospital, but we'll cut back to that later. We get introduced to our lead character, uh, Tom Atkins, who's playing Dr. Chalice. Uh, this scene is odd because he's, he's, okay, so he's coming home. And every scene in this movie that's, is odd. That's a good point. Uh, he's coming home and he's got this these mask yep. that he's bought for his kids, and it's late at night. He comes in and his he's given his. I guess this is his wife or ex wife. I don't know. They. It, I think ex. I'm pretty sure ex. Okay, so he's he's coming into this, but he just walks in like he lives there. Like, I mean. Okay, well, anyways, he walks into this house, and he's like, hey. I just walk into people's apartments. <laughs> he's like, hey, I got these masks for our kids. And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. I went down to the mall and bought them the silver shamrock mask. And these kids are so excited, they run to the TV, and, of course, the silver shamrock commercial is playing. And what kids get excited for commercials? And all this commercial is is literally I mean, just counting down the days to Halloween. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I... <laughs> I don't know. This it, not, all right. I, again, I don't have cable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure, like, there's commercials that you like, right? But I don't run to the TV to see them. Well, and fact, no, but you're not a kid. Kids are so easily entertained. I, I, not to mention, no, I don't. can't think of any commercials that I was, like, obsessed with. It's just a commercial. <laughs> like, shows, yes, I would run to the TV. Like, mm-hmm. Golden Girls came on, I was there. Yeah. Anyway, um, it, it's it's irrelevant. But what I was going to say is the scene is odd because he comes in like he's had like a long day of work and he bought these kids these masks and he's like, all right, I got to go to work. See you later. <laughs> and just walks right back out. The scene takes, what, like two minutes maybe? If that. Yeah. Anyway, so he leaves and he goes to work and he works at this hospital. Um, As he's there, the, the gas station attendant brings in this man that's been scared into shock, basically. And they wheel him in on a gurney and the, you know, the nurses are like, oh, he's... Uh, he's in shock, whatever. And this guy's attendant is hilarious to me because this guy's like, 
is he gonna be all right? I mean, I found him like this. I swear to God, that's all to it. Like he's like I so love, definitive. The, the gas station attendant's my favorite character. He's so definitive and like being defensive at the same time. And he's like, I was told, you know, do the right thing when someone comes and they need help. You get them help. And I was like, yeah. this dude has like an over ambitious alibi, <laughs> like to make sure that no one's gonna think that he had anything to do with this. But. They put this man in his room, right? And this hospital doesn't seem busy at all. Like, there's no one really here except for this man. Like, really. Pretty much. But this man that's been scared to death or whatever, he's in, his ho- he's in his hospital room, and all he's whispering is, like, everyone's dead, they're all dead, or something like that. They're going to kill us all. Some morose shit. He hears this, the Silver Shamrock commercial come God. on the TV, and it wakes him. Ba- he basically snaps him out of it, and he's, but he's still, like, scared shitless. Uh, and in walks into his hotel room, uh, his hotel, in his, his hospital room, in walks in hospital and, hotel. Yeah, what's the difference? In walks this guy, another guy in a suit, and he basically he like gouges this man's eyes out, but he's bra- he's basically crushing his skull through his eye sockets. Yeah, and all <laughs> all the while, this man that's in on the bed is holding this jack o' lantern mask like gripping it tightly he's not this is the thing about 80s movies which or even movies i would say probably before the 90s so the 80s well any movie before the (laughs) 90s they really didn't it's hard to describe they really didn't focus on reactionary sounds like this man is being literally like having his eyes gouged out but he's not screaming in pain he's not you know flailing around he's just kind of it's just kind of happening to him yeah, that's yeah, okay. It's, it's really weird, but anyways, this nurse walks in, sees what's happening, screams, and Doctor Chalice comes running down the hall as this man in the suit basically just strolls out of the hospital. Yeah, way too casual. So casual, and it's it's funny because like Doctor Chalice isn't able to catch up to the man, even though the man is walking at a very slow pace out to his car. But this guy walks out to this car, gets in his car. Starts pouring gasoline all over himself and lights himself on fire, which causes the car to explode in a fireball. Which, uh, well, that's yeah, that's how gas works. Yeah, gas. But this is inside. It like immediately explodes. Yeah, you know, because like the doctor runs outside as the man's pouring gas on himself, and the car explodes like within that second. The part you're questioning about this movie? No, I got lots of questions <laughs> for this movie. That's just one of them. Um. So yeah, the the doctor watches his car explode and this man kill himself. And uh, we cut to the next morning, and I believe we get a title card here too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, fucking course we do. Uh, this they're pro- the we probably get a title card and the fucking song again. Probably and the, and how many days until Halloween and the location. <laughs> so the next morning, I guess the man that was killed in the bed that had his eyes gouged out. out. Something Jesus. Yeah, his daughter comes in i guess to identify his body with the Mm -hmm. sheriff and dr chalice i gotta say dude um dr chalice is a straight up womanizer running game (laughs) all over this this dude is a hustler because he had his ex-wife in the beginning we saw he was flirting with one of the nurses before uh the man died he sees uh this man's daughter whose name is ellie that uh, was had his eyes gouged, gouged out. He sees her and he kind of like perks up, like he's into her. Then we cut to him meeting with a lab specialist, like a coroner assistant, and he's flirting with Wait, her hold too. Up. Does he kind of look like? Did he remind you of like a poor man's like Charles Bronson? A poor man's Charles Bronson with like a because hint of whole, Burt Reynolds in him. It's the mustache. Yeah, because yeah. the whole time I was watching this, I was like, man, I really want to watch. Death Wish. Well, this this dude Tom Atkins apparently is like a huge character actor in the eighties and nineties. Like he oh. was doing some shit. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, this guy is a straight so up. Hustler. I did not recognize anyone in this movie. I'm not I, I didn't either. Uh, but he's you know he's kissing this lad specialist and she's going through the remains of the man that lit himself on fire in the car. Keep in mind, we are trying our best to keep this plot together, describing it because it is very flimsy. <laughs> yeah, I f- yeah. So we cut to a bar and let me let me put it this way dr chalice is at this bar it's very it's pretty much empty other than him and the bartender and it's a sunday <coughs> morning so which i didn't know bars were even open on sundays but this one's definitely open yeah, i mean it depends where you go but like a, this is like early morning this is like eight or nine a.m and he's drinking watching cartoons 
<laughs> at this bar. Yeah, he's watching like some kind of old school black and white cart- Halloween cartoon. Uh, and the bartender changes the channel. And this is where we get our only glimpse at a better movie that we could, that they, re- <laughs> they remind you of a movie you could be watching instead. But we get a glimpse. This is a world breaking moment for me. Uh, yeah. This takes you right it- out of the movie. Although, let's be honest, was anyone into the movie to begin with? That's a good point. So maybe, maybe it brought you back into the movie, but they, they, the bartender changes the channel on the TV that Chalice is watching, and we get a glimpse of footage from the movie Halloween. We yeah. see Michael Myers, and we see Jamie Lee Curtis, and the, in this world, in Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, it's implied that Halloween 1, and I guess Halloween 2, were a movie. Yeah, is a movie like a fictional movie. See, this movie. is the point where I was I got back into this movie because that was the first time it had my attention since the opening credits. Right, me too. I was like, oh, I was like, oh sweet. shit, Michael isn't a oh, motherfucker. And I was like, man, I could be watching Halloween yeah. right now. <laughs> um, so Ellie enters this bar, and this is the most bullshit plot, like whatever, because she's like, you know, Patel's like, how did you find me? And she's like, oh, the nurses told me you'd be here. Again, it's a Sunday morning. Who goes drinking? I can understand day drinking to an extent, but it's just Sunday morning. It's like early morning. The sun is it's golden hour. Like, all right. If like if it was like brunch time, maybe I'd give him that. But he seems like he's been there all night drinking. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyways, she basically says, you know, I, the nurses told me I'd find you here. I something happened to my father you know also, I, I like how just everyone knows like oh you're looking for him oh yeah it's sunday morning 8 a.m oh he's at the bar yeah this dude is oh. a straight up alcoholic he's gotta be <laughs> he's a womanizing alcoholic and he probably smells like old cigarettes and budweiser like that's i'm sure so or do you i actually remember my family actually i picture him more to be a Coors light kind of kind of guy my dad's a Coors light guy yeah. and has a mustache there we go oh my god my dad's the star of this movie <laughs> Um, it's also worth noting that pretty much everyone in this movie feels like they're exposition machines because she basically but like bad ones. Yeah. Cause Ellie basically gives up her whole backstory and just, you know, instead of show, don't tell, this is all tell for the most part. Uh, she basically says, you know, my dad owned a toy store and they, they go to the toy store and they're looking through his books. Cause apparently, this guy kept really good books. And I don't know. I don't remember what happens here. But basically, they're like, okay, we got to go to the Silver Shamrock Factory. I don't know. I don't even remember what the books tell tell them. It's such a this is such a boring movie. Um, they plan this trip to. I think this this is a fictitious town, Santa Mira, California. Couldn't tell you. Here's the thing. This we get a montage road trip to this to this town right it's what do you think like maybe three to four hours at least yeah probably something like that but when we open the movie this man we find out that this guy has been running i guess all the way from the silver shamrock factory back to this town yeah was this guy running for four a four hour what okay it's a four hour okay, road it's a trip four hour drive let's say you're going to let's let's be conservative and say 50 miles per hour the whole trip, right? Okay. Four hours. That's 200 miles just driving. That's yeah. at least, a, you're looking at a little over a three-hour trip. Yeah. So, so we're, how, we're being modest If you're here, running, but, what do you think your average speed is? Uh, man, you're, this, takes like a, this is like a 12 to 18-hour walk, maybe even more. God. <laughs> we got to give him, for stamina that alone. That dude has the legs of a machine. At least stamina alone. Oh, uh, wait. Hmm. So, <laughs> they stop in this this city, Santa Mira, and this is like the machine comment. Well, yeah, no, I got it. Later, yeah. Uh, th- apparently, this town is owned and like operated by the uh, president of Silver Shamrock. Like he's kind of built this town around the factory, and he's like the mayor, as well as like you know the I don't know. It's that, a- I mean, that's kind of how my hometown is. Really? Like, my hometown literally exists because of one company, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, the owner of the company is not, like, the mayor or anything, but... Well, in this movie, it is. That That's one of... That's the second time this movie... Sorry, third time this movie got my attention. Okay. Opening credits. Mm-hmm. Michael Myers cameo. That. 
Okay. But now I'm back out. So they're staying at this motel and they're posing as husband and wife because this town has got like some real like Pleasantville creepy shit going on. Uh, it's they they it's so this is so it almost turns into like a, like a weird BBC comedy here because all these people are like staying at this hotel and we get like introduced to all of them in like a comedic fashion like almost like a yeah. like a meet cute um but we got this weird irish motel owner and he's just telling them about oh yeah the town's run by Cochrane, who's the silver shamrock president you know he runs this whole place uh we get introduced to uh, one of the people saying the hotel, the Cupfer family, and this is like your classic annoying tourist family from like eighties and nineties movies. Uh, they have a little ginger kid that's a little asshole. He's probably like seven or eight, and he's a little dick. Uh, we also get introduced to this woman who's a straight up biatch. Like she's uh, her name is Marge, but we don't find that out till later. Uh, and she, I guess yeah, she, yeah, I guess she worked at a toy conglomerate too like a toy store conglomerate and they didn't get an order refilled for the silver shamrock mask so she came up i don't know i'm just i'm literally just speculating at this point because i do not remember because this movie doesn't warrant itself to you remembering anything <laughs> um so they're uh ellie and chalice are in this this uh hotel room this is the most upsetting scene of the movie to me um uh, you know, they're like, th- there's obviously some weird, like, nothing has really happened between these two characters up until this point, but there's a weird kind of flirting sensation that just comes out of nowhere. And uh, Chalice is like, maybe I should get another room, you know, to like, quote unquote, be a gentleman right. kind of thing. But then Ellie's like, uh, we're posing as husband and wife. Isn't that kind of a stupid fucking idea? <laughs> and he's She's like, She's got a point. He's like, Well, I could go sleep in the car. She goes, Again. We're posing as husband and wife, and she, he's like, she's like, do you want to get another room? But like, I feel like she's genuinely asking him, but he takes that as a invitation to fuck because he's basically like, well, that's a silly question. And then there's like this completely unmotivated kiss between the two. <laughs> I I don't know. I I just seen baffled me and moving on. Yeah, we cut to the outside and apparently there's a curfew in place in this town a 6 p.m curfew that is early that is early as shit if you work a nine to five you basically have enough time if just you hit to traffic, get home you're fucked yeah oh uh spoiler note uh the voice of the curfew lady is actually jamie lee curtis uncredited wait really yeah our own laurie Str- strode yeah stroud get it strode. okay um so there's a 6 p.m. curfew, but Chalice ends up walking out of the motel. I don't know where he's going, but he's just walking around this motel, and he bumps into this drunk guy. This drunk guy is hilarious I'm, to me. Okay. I kind of retract my previous statement about the gas station guy being my favorite character, because I love the drunk guy. <laughs> he has all the best lines in this movie. So he's just taking a swig of a bottle, and he's like, oh, and he just starts spouting off his whole spiel. He's like... Oh, I didn't get a job because Cochran outsourced his employees. I didn't get a job at the toy factory. I'm like, Chalice is like, okay, hi, first of all. (laughs) This dude just starts spouting out his whole deal. And I can't remember if he offers, uh, what's his name, Chalice? Chalice a drink. Or does Chalice offer him a drink? Or Chalice asked for a drink. Yeah, either way, the guy's like, no, oh, it's cool. I don't have any diseases. Yeah, yeah. That's totally like, what you want to do is drink after wanna, a homeless person. <laughs> you should not lead with that. So the guy's like, the drunk guy's like, I'm going to get back at Cochran. And Chalice is like, okay, I'm just looking for the ice machine. So if you could kind of, and he's like, I'm going to make Molotov cocktails and blow everything up. And he's like, okay, I really just want to get to the ice machine. <laughs> yeah. Like Chalice has no care about this guy at all. Uh, but anyways, this guy kind of, they kind of separate and, uh, the drunk gets killed by the men in suit, the men in suits. We kind of find out <coughs> are Cochran's henchmen and they, they don't just kill him like they did the man in the hospital. No, 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 no. They literally rip this man's head off and it basically turns into a water fountain of blood out of this dude's neck hole. <laughs> I will say this movie plays up the gore. It's got a lot more gore than you're used well. to. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. All like. In Halloween 1 and 2, like, 
It's very minimalistic. Very minimal blood. Yeah, you don't see a lot. I want to say the only blood you really see in Halloween 2 is when he gets shot in the eye, pretty much. Uh, yeah. That's I mean, all yeah, I could think of. And then this one, they're like, fuck it. Everything. Uh, I gotta say, uh, Ellie, who's played by Stacy Nelkin, is the only good part of this movie. And only because... Uh, yeah. Only because we cut to this scene. It's like a bird's eye view of her in lingerie. Um, Damn it, Dustin. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I Actually, we skipped a, a little bit of a part. There's a very weird, uh, real quick scene of her coming out of a shower. And she's got the smallest towel on I think I've ever <laughs> seen. Barely goes past her hips. Um, she comes out of the shower. She puts this towel on. But then immediately takes the blanket off the bed and wraps herself up in that. So I didn't know if she was like, oh, this towel is too small. I need to dry off with this blanket. Or she's like, you know, some girls will take showers and then kind of just lay around naked for a while on the bed. I didn't know if that's what she was doing. Anyway, but we cut to her in lingerie and we get straight up. Pardon my crudeness. Straight up titty sucking coming from from Chalice. Like, yeah, th- this a, it's no a shame weird, about it. It's a it's so like batshit out of nowhere sex scene. Like this part makes no fucking sense. This whole fucking movie makes no sense. But this this part definitely take elevates the nonsense making. It's just so unnecessary. It's there it, for no it's reason. Like, it's like an eighties porn music video. This is the one scene where the editing isn't, like, super stupidly fast and choppy. They're mm-hmm. like, no, slow down on that one. Somehow there's a conversation between that comes up between the two, and Chalice is like, how, o- how old are you? To Ellie. Post. But this is post-coitus. This is post, yeah. <laughs> He's like, he, they've already fucked. What, at this point, why does it matter? I mean... <laughs> I, that really drew me out of the movie. I was like, well, hold up. Like, he might as hold well up. just look over and be like, so am I going to jail or no? What's up? Yeah, like, literally, like, he, 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 he his conscience caught up to me. He's like, wait a minute. I mean, man, <laughs> the 80s were a different time. That's all I have to say. Magical. And I, this sex scene happens, and I, I'm like, I'm starting to think that Ellie did not give a fuck about her dad whatsoever. Obviously not. This is like literally, and I want to say literally because I believe the title card even tells us this is only like two days after her dad's dad. Yeah. And she's like, you know. <laughs> like. In lingerie. Her dad dies. That sets them off no, on their adventure. On. Her, and then they completely dad, forget about it. Her dad dies a brutal death. Yes. Like, he gets his fucking head crushed. And then they completely forget about it for the rest of the movie. So... Like, once they set off on their little <laughs> road trip, uh-huh. I don't think they talk about her dad one more fucking they, time. They do once. Literally Bullshit. once. Literally once. And we'll get to it. But it's, Oh, wait. You're right. Yeah. Literally once. But... Uh, so oh, and that scene that we're gonna get to confused me because I was like, why do we care about her dad? Oh wait, right. Yeah. Fuck. So Ellie gets introduced to one of the ladies. Oh, I forgot to mention when we get introduced to all the characters uh, outside the motel, uh, the Cupfer family almost runs over Cochran. A uh, uh, Cochran almost runs over Chalice, and then he gets introduced to their <laughs> characters. Hi, we're touring the country. Whatever the exposition machines. Then he almost gets run over by Marge, who's basically like, get the fuck out of my way. Yeah, and Marge, he's con- OG, triple OG. He is constantly almost getting ran over in this yeah. movie. <laughs> but Ellie meets Marge, and they're just kind of having a conversation. And it's hilarious, because at the end of their conversation, uh, literally the woman's like, my name, my name is Marge something. And she's like, I, I'm... Gutman. Marge Gutterman. And I work at the so-and-so factory. If you're ever out there, look me up. And then walks away. And then the next scene, Marge dies. <laughs> so why do we have to get not only her full name, her occupation, but also her home, her location? Why do we need all of this? <sighs> Anyways, I know you can't answer me. I'm just asking. I got so you can nothing. feel my frustration. We cut back to another sex scene with <coughs> Chalice and, and, uh, and Ellie. And in the next room, Marge is in, like, this straight-up, like, Carrie's mom kind of wardrobe, like, nightgown kind of thing. And she's reading a book, but she happens to notice there's, like, this 
this tag, this like silver shamrock tag that I guess is attached to all the mask on mm-hmm. her floor. And she just starts fucking around. Like she opens it up and there's like a, a motherboard, like a little chip inside. Yeah. And she just starts fucking with it, like poking it with a bobby pin. And Why would you don't do that? But what happens? The best thing that could possibly a happen. Fucking laser shoots out of the, the chip into Marge's face. And Marge is, is dead. Like As fuck. Her face gets burned off by this laser. And like her oh man, it's brutal. Like her lips are like curled up to yeah. her eyes. Not only that. Her jaws off. But literal bugs. Like roaches, yeah. spiders. Just start crawling out of her fucking mouth. Like she's dead. She is DOA and they're just like crawling out of her face. Yeah. Out of the big hole yep. of her face. So if you're if you're not already confused, this Again, scene point number four where I was back into the movie. <laughs> Alright, so here's the thing. Uh Chalice calls up the sexy loud specialist he was talking to. And this is weird, because this woman all right, I have a question. This woman's rummaging through the ashes of this man, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, of this guy that burned himself up with the gasoline in the car. And she's just like, she's got like these <coughs> Petri dishes that have like ashes and then like little like cogwheels and shit. And she's like, <sighs> okay, she's like basically saying, you know, I, I can't find any like bone fragments or anything. Yeah. It's been Five days since this has happened. How is she not able to identify that there's no human remains in these ads? She's basically playing with like a bicycle bell part. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, can't find anything in here, but I'm still... There, it's five five days. How do you not realize that this was a robot? Like, like she's literally like, it's just a bunch of like burnt metal... By the way, she's... Robot pieces she, in front of her. She's like, oh, this is... This is a tough one. I'm stumped. That bone? No. But she's she's also doing this without gloves on. She's just yeah, rubbing... Yeah, that <laughs> grossed me the fuck out. All right, that so... That was the first thing I noticed about that scene, and... I don't remember what Chalice asked her to do, but she's like, all right, but it's going to cost you some serious dinners when you get back. And, of course, Chalice is like, don't worry. We, we, we're definitely going to fuck when I get back home, so... This dude's already, hey, like, on to the next is, one. That is not what he says. <laughs> what does he say? He says, oh, you know I love having dinner with you. As I'm saying, he's already playing it. He's like, yeah, oh, don't no, worry. They're talking about eating, Dustin. Yeah, eating something. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> he's a vegetarian. I'll put it that way. Uh, mm-hmm. Get it? Because of the, the bush, Mally? Yeah. All right. We cut to... Uh, I'll say I just got to mention. Yeah, every, it seems like every woman in this movie, other than Marge, is throwing herself themselves out of him so this scene is no marge didn't get fucking time to Mm -hmm. we find out we meet cochran okay and he's basically wheeling out (coughs) marge's corpse in the back of this van he's like oh don't worry we have a better hot like doctor at my factory at my toy factory than we do at the local hospital so they marge i'm assuming is dead is and not only is she dead she's getting turned into a robot because he just wheels her off to his his toy factory Turned into a robot. Turned into a robot. We're get, we're gonna get there. Don't worry. Uh, so they meet Cochran, and basically they've invited the Cupfer family up there because I guess they somehow work with uh Cochran, where like they're testing out what the new mask are like. Which I don't know why they need the whole family. I don't know. But it turns out Ellie and Chalice basically used posed under the fake name Mister and Mrs. Smith. Is like that's the best they can do as far as a fake name goes. Literally, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'm just chalking everything up to early 80s. I guess. But anyways, they tour this factory. There's nothing here worth talking about, really. There's just this weird... Uh, the factory's fucking gross. Yeah. It's, like, nasty. Like, I expected some, like, streamlined conveyor belt type shit. No, it's, like... L- pouring latex into mold and into making like mess. white, Like, out of, like, dirty white buckets. And, yeah, it's gross. So the, yeah. all over this factory, we have Cochran's employees, but really they're his henchmen that are just dudes in suits. Mm-hmm. And as they're touring the factory, we come across uh, Ellie notices that her dad's car is in the, like this garage, 
And she freaks out. She's like, hey, that's my dad's car. And she tries to run over there, and there's just a bunch of henchmen guarding it. But my question is, why do they need his car? Why not scrap it? If they're if their whole thing is we find out basically that Cochrane is making robots out of people. Uh and okay. we'll we'll talk about that when we get there. But uh I know you're just dying to talk about that and, and argue with me over it. But why keep if you're doing this low key shit and also the plan he's got going on with his mask, which we're about to get to, why keep his car? Why not just scrap it to get rid of the evidence? Like I mean free car. I no. <laughs> no, I was going to say I guess, but no. Um, so Ellie <coughs> goes missing, and uh, we find out that the henchmen have kind of kidnapped her. And they, tr- they kidnap Chalice. They try to kidnap Chalice, too, but he breaks into the factory, the toy factory at night, and he finds this old lady crocheting. Yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this scene is even weirder. I don't know what half this shit has to do with the movie. Like, it's just... Oh yeah, put an old lady in there. I feel like they were tr- like trying to do something like with symbolism or something, or I don't. I'm no. making excuses yeah, for this no. movie so much. We turn out. Turns out this lady is a straight up robot because yeah. he her head falls right the fuck off. Uh, another one of the henchmen and Chalice start fighting. And it turns out this is actually a robot fight because Chalice defeats the guy, punches through his stomach. And pulls his hand out to realize it's just filled with orange juice. Like, yeah, this dude is just filled with gears Weird and juice, yellowish orange paste. So here's it's the like thing: the end of Alien. Yeah, the henchmen kid like take Chalice and like bind them up in this room, and we Cochran comes in, and all of a sudden, the Cochran's Irish accent is gone. Yeah, um, he's basically a Bond villain oh, in this movie. He drops his entire fucking plan. In this, this is monologue. this movie turned into a Bond movie. We have quote unquote Bond who's Chalice in like this inescapable chair that he's latched into and then Cochrane is Cochran basically Blofeld. He, well dude he even has like the typical like every Bond villain has a weird thing a to weird him. deformity kind of thing. This is his disappearing accent. There you go. And, well, actually, I would say he's not Blowfield. He's more like Gold uh, yeah. uh, Goldfinger. Because he's got him in this mm, chair, and he's yeah. like... He goes off on this whole rant about Halloween. We get the tip, like some bullshit history of Halloween. and But it turns out this is this whole thing is about witchcraft and robots? I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know where the robot part comes into play. Okay. I get the witch... Uh, Sit back for a minute. Are we about to do this now? Uh, I thought we'd wait until we got to LA, but we can do it now if you want to. No, I was just going to explain how the... No, this is the... Oh, you're going to explain the, the whole the his- title. Okay. Please try to explain what witches have to do with... Is it wit- the season of the witchcraft? Is that what okay. we're doing? Okay, so... Because there's his whole approximately plan. zero witches in this movie. His, hang on. <laughs> Cochran's whole plan is to bring back... Shit. <laughs> yeah. You All right. His whole plan is to pretty much bring back like the ancient like warlocks and witches of past times. So in this movie, but by doing that, he needs to sacrifice living children, pe- children, children. So his plan is to distribute his killer masks, set them off using that fucking song. <laughs> And kill all these kids to revive the ancient witches and warlocks. I he get just, that. He just also happens to build robots that's, to do that's his dirty what I, work. No, I don't accept the he also happens to. No, no, no he literally just Th- this happens movie, to build robots. This movie too. has to either be witchcraft and stuff like that. Or robot. It's basically got to be witchcraft. Would you, been, would you have been happy if they no it like season of the witch bots? No, uh, if the, maybe it was season I of the witch season of the witchcraft maybe. But again, you can, you either have to do witchcraft or invasion of the body snatchers with robots. Like you can't do both in this movie because it's invasion too... of the witch snatchers. Mm, maybe. But anyways, no, they went for both. It's a bold move. <laughs> It's a bold but did it pay off? Not really. No. Okay. So they But keep, they went for it. Basically they put a mask on on uh <coughs> on Chalice and they make him watch a commercial. Uh man. So yeah, they make him watch this commercial and they're like, You're gonna this is gonna happen to you. That he's like, you know, when this commercial goes off at 
8 p.m. on ha- Halloween night. All the kids wearing their mask, watching the commercial, are going to have what happened to Marge, basically. Have the bugs come out and crush their skulls, basically. Whatever. Um, so, you know, uh, Cochran leaves, and he gets with his robot henchman into this elevator. And this is funny, because there's, there's a robot sneeze in this movie. Yeah. Which I... That's... I don't know why what that had to do with anything. I just thought it was funny. They're in the elevator. One of the robots sneezes, and Cochran just kind of looks at him. I was like, "Huh, okay. I guess we we had some pretty elaborate robots in this movie." Well, yeah, it was built by a warlock. <sighs> He's not a warlock. I don't believe Cochran's a warlock. I I don't. There's nothing in this movie of substantial credit <coughs> to prove to me that he is a robot. But yeah, he's not. He's not a I robot. Mean, uh, a warlock. Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Cupper family gets basically put into this IKEA showroom, yeah. and they give this kid a, a, a one of the the mask, <coughs> and they're like, you know, just let the kid watch the commercial, and you know, I, I don't know what they're, I think they're like quality control. Anyways, we get this seizure inducing pumpkin again uh, that we have from the opening credits on this TV. This kid gets probably the most gnarliest death. Silver shamrock. Yeah, he gets like the Kill me. gnarliest death ever. Because basically yeah. he's got this mask on. And he like, without screaming or anything, he kind of just grabs his head. And his skull pretty much just like Caves deteriorates. And out comes nothing but bugs and snakes and, and a shit. big ass fucking snake. Huge snake. The mom faints. And I don't... How does the dad... How do the parents die? Because basically they're implied that the cu- the comforts comforts die. I get how the kid dies. I don't dies. really know, to be honest. The mom just kind of faints, and I don't know what happens to the dad, but they they die. So what? Let me. I guess you kind of explained it, but Cochran's plan. Let's let's let me nail it back down. Basically, at eight p.m. on Halloween night, they're gonna play this commercial, broadcast this commercial all over yes. the United States, whatever. All the kids are urged to put their mask on at this time, watch the commercial, and then what happened to this little kid is going to happen to them. Yeah. And after that happens, all the kids' sacrifices are going to bring back warlocks and witches? I think so. Okay. What about time zones? Did he take that <laughs> into consideration? Because if it's eight... They're in California maybe it's, in this maybe movie. It's being... What's the word? No, broadcast live? No, because it's... Well, not live, but like, what is it, simulcast or whatever? Like, well, this when is, it this airs is, at the same time, no matter what? Well, this is California, and it's 8 p.m., so that means it's so already here, happened. So here it would be happening on the East Coast, at 5 p.m.? Midnight? No, it'd be like, well, no, it'd be like 11 p.m. Is it three hours? I think it's three. Okay. So, but either way, I don't think he took time zones in there as a factor into consideration. All right, here we get a montage of literally every location possible in the United States. We get New York and Chicago, I think, Ohio. Like, this is where all the locations are. Hope you all like title cards. Yeah, because you're about to see a shit ton of them. And all these kids are wearing one of the silver shamrock masks. Like, are are Halloween masks really this popular? Like, Uh, fucking apparently. I mean, you'll occasionally see somebody in, like, uh, a skull mask or something on Halloween, yeah. but it's usually you go for fictional characters like pop culture characters. Yeah, I, something I've never, relevant. I don't think I've ever seen anyone in a jack o' lantern mask. Little like, well, I mean, little kids. Honestly. Anyways, we cut back to this lab specialist, and uh, <coughs> she. Basically gets attacked by the henchman as she's still rummaging through these ashes. Yep. And she gets drilled to death. And I don't mean okay, by Chalice's this is dick. Literally the only part of the movie I like. I love this part. It's a cool shot. I'll give yeah, you that. I love that shot. She so she gets drilled in the fucking head to death. Time number five, I was back into this movie. <laughs> so Chalice asks Cochran, he's like uh, why are you doing this? He's like, do I need a reason? And yeah, you do. Yeah, kind of. For story's sake, you definitely need one. Um, and this is funny because as Chalice is telling, uh, as Cochran is telling Chalice about why he's doing this, we there's like unused on the TV screen. We're watching more of the movie Halloween, but it's like unused footage. Yeah. And basically, they're using the theme song from Halloween in the movie as 
diegetic music for Cochran in this scene. Like as he's explaining his plan, the Halloween theme song is kind of played underneath them, which is kind of cool. It is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Uh, in, a, in a better movie, it would be awesome. We find out Ellie's been kidnapped and is like on this monitor. We see her like on this concrete slab, like chained where she can't get away. Yep. But Charles escapes and rescues Ellie and he starts going <coughs> through the factory. And basically we see a piece of Stonehenge, like one of the st- the, the slabs, yeah, I guess. Yeah. The one that went missing earlier. Here's the thing. Holy shit. Guys. I'm assuming what's happening here, and this is, again, the movie does not tell you, is that they're taking, this piece of Stonehenge has some kind of witchcraft abilities. Uh-huh. So they're scraping off pieces of it and putting it into the chip that's yeah. used on the mask, right? And that's what... So you're picking up on this plan. It's all coming together, isn't it? No. Okay. <laughs> but somehow, Chalice ends up blowing up this, this Stonehenge piece. So does that does why does the commercial still work then if the, <laughs> if the Stonehenge piece is gone? Well, because there's still pieces in all the masks that have already been distributed. I guess now they just can't make any more, which I doubt they were going to, because you know Halloween's, yeah. you know, yeah, that day. So this I, I don't remember this. Chalice and Ellie escape. <clears throat> Did they kill Cochran? I don't remember. Uh. I don't think so. I think he just kind of escapes, right? No. He kills him. I just don't remember how. Okay. Man, this movie is boring me to tears. Yeah. Um, Here's the thing. <sighs> They're driving down the road. and Everyone's all happy. Like, we made it. Yay. Yeah, you think it's the end of the movie. We still got like five to <coughs> ten minutes to go. Turns out, but up, boom, Ellie's a robot. No, of uh, course. She attacks Chalice, and he like, you know... Ripped her arm off of her head. Ellie was replaced by a robot. We're about to talk about that. Before we get into that, let's talk about this. If she was a robot all along, why does she take so long to reveal that she is a robot? Like, why would she help him escape the factory? Yo, how many times did he fuck a robot? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay. Um, Um, Oh, fuck. Shit. Well, wait. This movie's awesome. Are you implying that she was a robot all along? No, fuck you. It's like a Jacob's Ladder kind of thing. Don't know. <laughs> or are you implying My that my theory is falling in on itself? What about well, no? What about this? What about when he went to go meet with a drunk? That's when they replaced her, or when they kidnapped her. Well, that's what the movie tells you. But I like the idea. Maybe they kidnapped her a little earlier. You just want him to fuck a robot. I do. I like that idea now. So here's the point of contention. Do you actually want to talk about this now or you want to go ahead and finish the movie? Because we're right at the end. I think Let's we should... talk about this. Okay. And then, because the ending is going to be a whole conversation we got to have anyway. So before, for those of you listening, Mally and I have a disagreement here, okay? She was not a robot the whole well, fucking time. Well, let me time. explain what the what is happening. Mally believes that Cochran is kidnapping people, killing them, and then replacing them with robot replicas. Yeah. I am arguing that he is taking these people <laughs> and turning them into robots. Their body. I'm I believe he is basically doing like you're you're positing it's an invasion of the body snatcher situation. Yeah. I'm thinking he's just taking I think that's why Ellie on that monitor is shown on that slab. They're basically gonna come in, do surgery, and replace her like innards with robot material. Okay, well, if like you're saying they're going to, when do they do it then? The whole time that Charles is kidnapped and trying to escape and everything. It's like ten minutes. I I stand by my argument. <laughs> Nothing in this movie makes sense. I'm not gonna hold time. Yeah, we are argue. It's like this is a, a futile argument, but yeah. I I we're still gonna, we're nowhere with yeah. this. All right, let us know what you think, guys. If you think that she's being turned into a robot, or let me know why you her. know Dustin's wrong. Okay. All right, so Chalice starts running, and we end up back at the same gas station. Oh, he kills the robot, Ellie. Yeah, I thought we kind of glossed over that. Okay. Well, anyways, he starts running, and he's basically her he's trying. He's with ba- a tire iron. Yeah, yeah. He's got to be like basically. Find a way to shut off the commercials uh, from before he, all these kids see him. So he runs to this gas station, and he gets on the phone. My question is, who the fuck is he talking to on this phone? The president of TV? Because he's basically like... Ted Turner. 
<laughs> he's trying to convince all whoever he's talking to to stop playing the commercials. And it's hilarious because first of all, we get we get this uh, gas station attendant. He's back at the gas station and he's dishing out candy. What kid is trick or treating at a gas station? These kids show up and this gas station attendant is gas station attendant is happily handing out candy to him. I don't know, but I'm gonna try it. And it's pretty funny because one of the kids just walks in, turns on the TV, and just sits there and starts watching this dude's TV like without saying a word. And the commercial comes on, and Chalice is sitting right there. Okay, he's right behind this kid watching the kid watch the commercial, and he's yelling at whoever he's talking to to like shut off the commercial. <coughs> Why doesn't he just reach over and turn that TV off to at least stop that kid from watching the commercial? Because basically what happens is he convinces whoever to cancel the commercial. So the commercial's playing. All of a sudden, it interrupts. He's like, we have you know technical difficulties. The kid just takes the knob and turns to the next channel where the commercial is still playing. He's Smart like, fucking kid. He's like, you got to cha- turn them off on all the channels. And instead, he could easily just go turn that TV yeah. off. I mean, or tell the kid to get the fuck out of the gas station. But basically, they cut to the this kid cuts again to another commercial. It's the third commercial. And the guy's like, "Look, it's still playing on the third commercial on the third channel. You got to turn it off. You got to stop it. Stop it. Stop it." He's, <laughs> it's almost like a, a a girl trying to tell a frat guy to leave her alone. She's like, "Stop it. Stop it." And she's just yelling. It, it, that's that's how the movie ends. Is him just going, "Stop it." Cut to black. That's it. We, it's ambiguous as shit. This ending, like. What do you think, Mally? Do you think post credits a bunch of fucking kids die or Well Here's the thing. Is it in your <clears throat> No I I don't know. I mean it's left okay, ambiguous. Actually, we're gonna talk about it in your little trivia thing. But but, but what do you think? I, well I I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this now because I think this would have been amazing. So originally it wasn't gonna cut to black and play like the ending theme music. It was instead going to cut to black and just the audio was going to be millions of children screaming because they're being killed over the credits. <laughs> that would have been <clears throat> fucking amazing. That would have been gnarly. But they didn't do it. Yeah. They 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 uh dropped left the ball. It, yeah, left it left it more ambiguous. But can you imagine though if like you just been... cut to black and you just like children dying? No music or anything, just the sound of kids. Holy shit! That would have been that would have probably redeemed this movie for me. Well, at least to an extent. Eh. It wouldn't have been like Terminator kinda, Three, kind of like uh, re- redemption, but like a almost like a like a T three. It's more of a Planet the, of the Apes the kind of redemption, redemption for me. type thing. It's kind of a Planet of the Apes redemption for me. It doesn't redeem the whole movie, but it makes up for some of it. Gotcha. Um, but that's it. Yeah, like it's implied, I guess, that, that a, a bunch, bunch of, of fucking, fucking kids kid. die. <laughs> yeah, are just fucking. <clears throat> so that's it, man. That's the end of the movie. Uh, like they kill. Yeah, this movie literally the babysitting industry is going to tank. <laughs> um, let's talk about some trivia before we get to our silver Fuck lining. That. Let's keep talking about these dead kids. <laughs> what else you want to talk about? I mean, it, it's it, they die, man. That's I mean, that is heavy as fuck. It's well, it, we don't know that. That's the thing. This movie, they killed one kid in the mist. They killed one kid in this movie. They killed millions. No, no, no. You want them to no, kill millions? Fuck that. These kids are fucking dead. That's what you believe, but that's not what the movie limits. That's what I to. know. That that if there's they two would've... things I know. There's no. There's three fucking things I know about this movie. Fuck that song. <laughs> I forgot what the second one was already. There's no Michael Myers. There's four things I know about this movie. <laughs> God damn it. Um, They don't kill kids, Mal. They kill, they kill all one. the fucking kids. You and also, they're too. replacing people with robots. Okay. Well, I was Boom! like, if this movie had the balls to actually kill the kids, yes, I would be right there with you. But they don't. They don't even imply it. They just kind of leave it up to you to decide. Wait, what happens when one of the robots puts on the masks and watches the commercial? See, this is areas in the movie they just didn't bother exploring. Robot snakes? Ooh, I like that. Robot bugs? Robot snakes? Season of the Witch. Wait, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch 2. Yeah, Halloween 3.1 or 3.5. Down. I'm down for that. 
Um, let's talk about some more trivia, though. After Michael Myers died at the end of Halloween 2, the plan was, like we talked about, to make a new Halloween movie each year, each telling a different <coughs> story uh, around the holiday Halloween. But yeah, pretty much doing the anthology thing. But basically because Halloween 2 didn't do as well as Halloween 1, they were like, nah, we're, we might bring him back in a later movie, but we're going to do this movie and attach the Halloween name to it. Uh, and then this movie did... God awful. <clears throat> I mean, it made money. Don't get me wrong, but it didn't do nearly as good as it could have. Uh, using the original molds, the skull mask, the witch, and the jack o' lantern that are seen in the film were mass produced uh, for basically marketing promotion for this film. Like they actually like, sold the masks from the yeah, movie. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having one of those. Oh, that'd be awesome. You know what? <clears throat> we got confirmation. You oh, actually sh- are one over. Motherfucker. This- hey, I know. I said 13.5. <laughs> you said, Fuck I you. got it wrote down here. You said. You got it wrote, do you, Bama? I got it really? wrote down. Um, I said 12. Fuck no. Fuck you. I changed it to 13.5. Right. The Silver Shamrock theme was played a total of 14 times. I win, in motherfucker. Movie. Four times at the gas station alone. God. One at. Uh, his ex-wife's home. Yeah, because the kids are super stoked about one it. One in the hospital, one in the bar, twice on the television screens in the shop windows, twice on the radio, once in the motel office, one in the IKEA showroom, and uh, one at the final admittance area. Uh, I don't know what part that is, but all right. So yeah, <laughs> after, the plan was like we talked about to yeah, end the movie. Yeah, but they were like, "No, nah, we wanted to be a little more ambiguous." So there's a possibility that the kids got saved. So no. The fact that the director himself said there's a possibility those kids could have been saved led me to what? believe that they weren't. Why are you gonna? Well, I, wa- never mind. I want that you actually helped my argument. I there. want them to to to. I want them to end the movie killing a bunch of kids because that's a ballsy ending. Yeah, and it would have redeemed this horse shit of a movie, but they would didn't. It- it would have redeemed a lot of it. Because this movie would have been known as the movie that killed millions of kids. What other movie could say that? And if we're being honest, kids have it coming. I mean, they, oh, out of any they're other... They're awful, awful yeah. people. Yeah. So that is it, folks. That is Halloween 3 Season no of the Witch. No offense to all the kids that listen to this. <laughs> if you're in the age range of little... Uh, what I think his name is like Buddy Cupfer, the little kid, little oh, Buddy he has Cupfer. A stupid name. He's a little asshole kid. What was his name? Uh, let's talk about Silver Linings. I will go ahead and give yeah, mine. Li- his name is Little Buddy. It's such a stupid name. Actually, oh, you got a Silver Lining, do you? I have two. Okay. I have two. Uh, as kind of a new Good, thing for me. Because you're gonna hate mine. I have a funny one, and then I have an actual one. All right, let's go. This what is kind of my new thing now. I like to okay. have a little of both, but. My funny one is that at least there's going to be more candy for the other trick-or-treaters this year if all those kids are dying. <laughs> Which Jesus Christ. I mean, you know, you you take an opportunity and you try to find the best. That's the whole point of this podcast. Glass half full. You're right. All, all right. right. What's your... My wait, real that one. Was your serious one? Or no, that was, that was my fun one. My real um, one, and it's still not... It's This is more of a bronze lining. Okay. Uh, or an aluminum foil lining, but... Chalice did, <coughs> if, if the movie's ending is to imply, based on what the director said, that there's a possibility these kids were saved, Chalice pre- at least prevented a lot more deaths than there could have been by having those channels. That's true, that's true. Not air the commercial. Okay, that's my turn. Because. I have another funny one too, but keep going. Because Cochran was not turning people into robots, he was replacing them with robots. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I think Ellie might still be alive. She could still be held up in the factory somewhere because she was replaced by a robot, not turned into one. Okay. You son of a bitch. <laughs> My other funny one is that uh, Chalice got to, to nail Ellie without the commitment. Uh, or the awkwardness afterwards, because she got kidnapped immediately after. And ignoring my entire theory, yep. he might have fucked a robot. I like I I want this theory to be real. I mean, I, we can, maybe can rewatch it and justify that. Yeah, I don't want to rewatch no, it. No, you're right. Screw that. All right. How about some pick me up movie alternatives, Mally? What you got? What's a movie they can watch after watching whatever this is? I don't even want to call okay. this a movie. I'm gonna throw out Halloween H two O. That's a fun one. That's. Uh, Which, have you ever thought the title of that movie makes no sense? No. It's Halloween Water. No, it's well. <laughs> hydrogen dioxide (laughs) it's like if you unabbreviate the second part it's halloween halloween 
twenty. Halloween H. Because H in H two O stands for Halloween. Because it's been twenty years. But the title is Halloween H two O. Yeah. So it's Halloween Halloween twenty. I like to call it Halloween Water. <laughs> is that? I, I get them confused. Which one is the one with Buster Rhymes? Is that Resurrection? No, that is Resurrection. Okay, sir. so Halloween H two O is yeah. one with uh, where Jamie Lee cool Curtis J. comes back. Yeah, and, and Josh dies Hartnett immediately. And wait, or is what? that Resurrection? Which one? That's is Resurrection. She, she dies right no, at the beginning. She's she's all through. I get, I get those because the reason I back. Oh wait 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 H two O is uh, Josh Hartnett. Yeah yeah. yeah. Oh, okay okay. In she, the weird uh, boarding school. Yeah yeah yeah. And it ends with fucking Jamie Lee Curtis fucking decapitating him. Yeah. But Rock then, and roll is fuck. But, which is ruined by... The resurrection I, is bullshit. I still kind of like that. That the whole Michael Myers switching out with the pyramid. But I, I think it would have been cool if, she ended this, if they would have ended the franchise with her killing him. And like she did in H2O. But resurrection, that's a cool way to bring him back at least. I'll give you that. Um, although, to be honest, you could watch any, of the, any movie from the Halloween franchise. Okay. One, two. I'll... Four, five, and six. I'm not gonna lie. I would say out of the four, five, and six, just go with six. Why not watch Paul Rudd kill my like beat up Michael Myers? You know what I mean? That's true. Uh, my pick me up alternative. I went in line with the whole witchcraft aspect of this movie, oh, you and mean I the went, witchcraft that isn't in the fucking movie. Yeah, and I went with the craft. I thought that's yes. a that's a fun movie. It's a classic. It's hot topic before Any, hot topic. Anyone was hot who topic. hasn't seen <clears throat> the craft. Put you put the headphones oh, down. Holy now. shit! Go check that watch out. that movie. It is so good. It is so nineties, but it is so good. Absolutely. Oh wait, dude. was that? Yeah, that was late nineties, wasn't it? Like late nineties. I want to say like ninety eight, ninety seven. Yeah. It's a, it's a fun one. Great so, movie. Uh, that's Halloween three. Uh oh, that what a way to end. What a way to end this month. Man, we've had some good movies this month, and then we had this one kind of plop in our lap. Yeah. I mean, like, we did this one because we thought it was going to be funny. It was fun. And then I remembered how much of a chore it is to watch yeah. this movie. It is not a fun experience. For, maybe this is one of the ones you get around with a group of friends and make fun of. But It has to be. By yourself, this movie is depressingly, like, Holy awful. Holy shit. Um, no, I'm moving. After this, though, we got some heavy hitters lined up. I think oh, yeah. November is all just, let's pick the most depressing, <laughs> fucked endings we can. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, uh, so next our next week. our next episode is Election Day when we will, when it'll come out. So yeah, we we got a little something lined up for that. Do you want you want to give them a little give them a little clue for next week? <laughs> so uh, well, I should also mention uh, next episode is going to be my birthday episode. Yes. So so you I, it was the the pick of next week was exclusive to you. Yeah, I got to pick next week's, and <laughs> I, I I decided to go with something. Cause let's let's face it, no matter it's it's kind of like Alien versus Predator next week. Whoever wins, we lose, kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, we we don't have the best options, so I'm, I, I'm just keeping my mouth shut. I had to put in something here. I was like, okay, we have this election day. People are gonna hear this episode the day it comes out. I wanted to pick a movie that was political in a sense. Okay, okay. it's definitely got ties to at least relevant topics yeah and kind title of. titles relevant yeah, yeah. uh so uh, clue for next week um i'll say it's always good to end a paper with a quote all right and i hope i think anyone who knows me or knows what i'm talking about instantly gets that but yeah it's next week's a fun one it's a great movie <laughs> but it's also like Man, next said, November's gonna be grim. It's a grim month, man. We uh, had way too much fun this month. Mm-hmm. We gotta balance ourselves out. I gotta say, Mally, I think this might be our longest episode too. Halloween three. How do you feel oh. about that? Bummer. <laughs> Holy shit, bummer. And the fact, the thing is, there is still a lot to talk about with this movie. It's just, I'd rather not. Yeah, no, we're done. This would... is it. Uh, so thank you everyone for listening. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe on iTunes. Let's get our subscriptions up. Let's get some ratings, some feedback. Leave us a little like five star feedback if you want, or one star. You know, yeah, we'll find the silver lining in that. Is. <laughs> and just let us know what you like, what you don't like, or if you've got a suggestion for a movie that you think's got a fucked up ending. We do an entire episode on the silver lining of the bad reviews. Ooh, I would do that. <laughs> Hell yeah! If you got a suggestion though for a movie you think that we should see that has a fucked up ending that you want us to talk about, we'll. Most definitely do it. Just leave us a, a message or a post on Facebook. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash silver linings playlist. 
just drop us a note. We're totally open suggestions. Uh, Jesus, man. This was a fun yeah. month. This is a fun month. All Halloween, Woo! the horror theme movies. It's great. Uh, and there's still so month. there's still so many horror movies we're gonna do. Oh yeah, there were a lot. Like obviously, we only we did five. Mm-hmm. There but, are a lot more than, and that. we have still a lot on our schedule. Just, oh yeah, I, you know we picked which ones we could that had some really grim endings for for this month. But we got a bunch coming up. I mean, this. <laughs> Rosemary's Baby. There's Martyrs. There's a bunch of oh, movies. Martyrs. God. Yeah. Uh, That's a rough watch. I don't know if I can rewatch it. Yeah. No. Same. That, maybe. Maybe we won't yeah. do Martyrs. Um. But that's that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us for for this spooktacular fest this month. And again, next episode, election day. So get out and vote. And if you're not gonna vote, at least come listen to our podcast and listen. <laughs> listen by the time the podcast airs. And people have listened to it. They'll be going into the booth, hopefully. So it's true. Uh, man, uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about to round up our spectacular month? Are you to leave them with something before we go into next week? As always, Excelsior! Excelsior. Stop it.